Hi, good afternoon. I'm Jessamy Jones, the Executive Director at the Springfield Museum of Art. And I am here with Liz Lederstrom, our uh, Manager of Collections and Exhibitions. And our special guest of honor is David Catro, our artist who has um, created these incredible works in this exhibition. Um, uh, David is an artist who lives here in Springfield. We're so fortunate to have him in our community. And he created um, these works mostly throughout the pandemic, I believe, and uh, for this exhibition, Does the Dream Dream the Dreamer? Um, we've been absolutely honored to have his work here at the museum. Um, David is most known for, his, for as being an illustrator, an incredibly prolific illustrator, um, that your political cartoons, I believe I read, were in over a thousand newspapers across the US and Canada and over 70 illustrated books um, and being on a number of New York Times bestsellers list. So it has been an absolute honor to work with David and to get to know him and to have um, his artwork here in the museum with us. So Liz and David and I are going to be walking around the gallery, but we really want you as the viewer to be able to have the opportunity to focus on the artwork. So we're gonna go ahead and just step out of the view of the camera and we'll continue our conversation um, behind the screen. <laughs> So David, uh, you're really well known for your illustrative work, um, as Jessamy just mentioned, um, but we also know that all of this work tends to be more of your fine art background, um, with your paintings and some drawings and pastel. Can you tell us a little bit more about what inspired um, this exhibition for you? Well, um, yeah, it's, I think it's appropriate that we, uh, that we address the, my, my work as an illustrator as a, and as a writer because um, as you well know, uh, illustrations are um, images created for the specific purpose of, um, you know, continuing or creating an idea, a specific idea. And my book work is, um, uh, the work that I had done is, is work that's secondary to the words, where it's sort of augmenting or, or creating a sort of a subtext to, the, to the, these written words. Um, it's inevitable that um, when an artist would find themselves in a position to create virtually anything that they want, um, my uh, end product is something that might be loosely considered maybe illustrative, I guess. I, I think um, inevitably those images come forth that um, that I am um, uh, just sort of possessing inside my head, so they they come out, and um, you know we don't we don't live in a vacuum as uh, as people and artists certainly uh, uh, that holds true for artists too when they're creating. Um, so my work is um, is in some ways. Um, taking these, these images, these, these ideas that I've got inside me and trying to find some way to communicate them. Uh, inevitably, the, the circumstances surrounding us um, uh, begin to sort of influence the, the whole process. And um, we mentioned COVID uh, in, in particular in your introduction, and I think that's um, uh, in, in some ways that did influence me because um, when I was began thinking about this this exhibition in 2000 it was really 2018 I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do at all I mean it was just it was impossible I mean it's kind of like going which part of the universe would you like to you know uh, zoom in on and explore and that's a, that's a tough thing. It's it's impossible. So I had um, I had a good year to try to figure out what this uh, what this all meant, what the possibilities were, and I struggled with it. Um, I was traveling at the time uh, in um, in March of 2020, and it was when the the pandemic began to emerge. This 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 awful, horrible monster that you know, that began to consume us. 
and um, I was uh, just, uh, I was in the process of returning, so I got back about, was it like the third week of March, and uh, just started painting. It was almost like a, um, I mean, I'm not, I don't subscribe to the, this, uh, the word catharsis, you know, it's a, as a way of kind of working something out of your system. I don't, I don't believe in that. I think uh, catharsis is, it's sort of a debatable thing on whether this is actually a legitimate thing. But um, I do know again that uh, artists are not working in vacuums. They're working in this environment, that this uh, hectic, anxiety-producing environment that we all occupy, and it finds its way into the work then, much like um, a cardiac tracing in the hospital when you're looking at uh, heart rhythms. Um, it's, a, it's a reflection of what's going on inside. And I think that would be probably a legitimate sort of explanation on virtually every piece in here right now. So I started in March of 2020, and this is the, this is the product of my angst. <laughs> I guess, uh, as an artist trying to, um, in my own way, um, survive the pandemic. Well, take it, take it what you will. We, we feel so fortunate to have it, to have this here. And, you know, I, I think I've shared this with you before, David, that every time I have come in to your exhibition during this time, I, I see something new and it resonates with me in a different way. And um, your, your work really, to me, does capture this, this spirit of this moment that we're in right now where it feels like we're in a little bit of free fall and hope and uh, sometimes maybe being stuck and scared and trying and finding joy all at the same time. So, um, yeah, I, I, I personally felt like I've benefited from getting to see your work. And even today, looking at the work here, I'm seeing things that are new that I haven't seen before that resonate in a new way. Thank you. Um, it is, uh, uh, um, yeah, it's just, it's an honor to be here and, and, and be able to show this. But, um, Well, great. Well, let's, um, we, we are going to move down to see another one of your works down here. Um, so your work in, in our space here is really large. I think that was maybe one of the biggest surprises when we came to see your pieces in, our, in your studio. And we walked into your studio and the floor space in your large studio was covered by 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 work and it was um, just so delightful and overwhelming and surprising. I believe the largest piece that you created for this exhibition is 19 feet tall. Is that something what, like that? Yeah. <laughs> is um, the piece plume that we're going to be going to look at? Mm -hmm. um, could you could you share what inspired you to um, create? very large work and I'm curious did you find new freedoms and challenging um, and working at, at this scale um, you know versus uh, an illustration which might be much smaller um, and how did it affect how did it affect your materials as well yeah um, well let me um, I'm gonna walk up there really yeah please really um, briefly here I don't like being on camera but um, but I wanted to kind of give sort of a scale to this. This was, um, uh, as you said, this was, uh, and as well as uh, many of the other pieces here, was on the floor. Um, my walls in my, in my uh, studio space are not large enough to, to accommodate this. So, uh, so this was laid on the floor, and most of the, um, and most of the, uh, the work that I had done on it was either on standing up like this, standing up like like this, or being down sort of painting like this. And um, it was uh, it was a 
it was an interesting experience because I don't normally work like that as, you know, I'm completing a, um, you know, a book illustration. So that was, uh, that was a, sort of a new discovery. But I enjoyed that. And it was, um, I think, I kind of liken it to, this, this piece in, in particular, liken it to a, a piece of music where it would be a, sort of a, a, a variation of a composition. There's a, um, you know, the piece of music is, is eluding me right now, but there's a, um, I think it's a variations on a composition by Paganini or mm. something like that. And, um, well, artists um, enjoy taking taking something that is sort of in the vernacular and riffing on it. Mm -hmm. um, this wasn't something that was in the vernacular in the sort of the public sense, but it was kind of in my vernacular. I, uh, I love painting birds. There's something kind of organic and and free about the way they move and kind of flowing, these flowing flocks. You see them out in the, out in the fields, the starlings are, are kind of like in these clouds almost, and it becomes a sort of morphing thing where, you know, I'm, I'm imagining that one bird is sensing the movements of the bird on either side and on up, above and below and um, mirroring their actions. And so the net effect of that is this sort of organic thing. Mm -hmm. that no one anticipated, but it's just absolutely beautiful. So um, my, my brushwork there, um, I hate talking with this mask here, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so my brushwork there is, is very quick and very energetic, and I like working like that. And each, each figure, each form dictated what the next one would be. Uh, sometimes there were opportunities to um, to see a moment where you know we could have this sort of this upward arc here, and there was an opportunity that presented itself to me that I decided I could kind of take it off this way and just kind of um, create this this moment that was sort of you know unpredictable or unexpected. But the thing kind of grew, and I, I've worked, uh, I've worked enough as an artist to know that um, I kind of have a vision already about what's what's going to happen. So um, I took this this big piece of canvas. It's a drop cloth, basically. You can see the seams in it, and I just started painting. Plume. It's kind of. It's sort of comical. It's it's um, sort of like kind of skirting, uh, you know, several different uh, different ideas. The uh, um, algae blooms mm -hmm. in the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, the plume of a bird. Mm -hmm. uh, the the double O's there next to each other in the M seems almost cartoony, mm -hmm. but still energetic too. So. And I, I wrote it down there in my, so I wouldn't forget it. You know, I put it down on the, on the uh, canvas, and I said, "Okay, I think that can stay. I think it just, it's um, this painting is kind of like a sort of like like a ge geologic kind of thing where you can kind of look at the striations and you can kind of determine the uh, the origins a little bit." So. Yeah, I know you have a background um, through some of our earlier conversations uh, while planning the exhibit in um, biology. Um, would you be able to share a little bit more about how that might have inspired pieces like this? Um, sure. Um, I'm going to take this off. Go ahead. I'm having a hard time breathing. <laughs> okay. Um, so, biology. Uh, yeah, my... Um, my sort of foundation as someone who was kind of anchored in the sciences, anchored in the natural world, is a, it's something that's always been part of me. Uh, I grew up in Michigan and my summers and springs and winters were spent out observing things. And 
Um, it's very much like the way da Vinci learned. I'm not Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci, but I understand the idea of observing something firsthand rather than looking at it in a book. Uh, so a lot of my time spent as a, as a kid were spent outside looking at things. And so that seemed to be the natural path for me when it was time for me to go to college. Um, my intent was to go to a medical school. Um, I, uh, I, lo I just love that idea. Uh, I wasn't as disciplined as everybody else in my program, so I would have probably, if I had gotten to the point of actually opening a practice, malpractice <laughs> probably would have ensued at some point. Uh, so I, um, but that, that foundation of understanding the natural world um, infuses uh, itself in, in all of this stuff. There's sort of a natural kind of uh, organic uh, feel to, to all of this stuff. And um, my, again, that, uh, uh, that inspiration, or what would be the opposite of inspiration, uh, of um, the pandemic, uh, that found its way into my work. And so my understanding of sort of natural processes, the, you know, the growth and the pr proliferation of viruses, bacteria, all of that stuff. Um, and that, that's why I think I make a horrible patient when I go in because of the imagination. <laughs> I know enough to be scared, mm -hmm. to be terrified about what's going on. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so a lot of this, the stuff that you, that you see in here is the result of um, this foundation that I have. And, um, and it just kind of finds, us, finds itself in you know, it finds its way into into all of this stuff. So it's it's, it's very, I think it's very biologic in a lot of ways. I, the, the Conti, the Conti was a, um, I'm self-taught, I'm a self-taught artist, so much, much of my, uh, so much of my, uh, you know, my lessons were spent uh, going through museums and, and looking at, uh, looking at, the work of other artists, uh, mostly, mostly the uh, you know the masters, the, the Dutch. Uh, I, in particular, love looking at drawings and and etchings, and um, and Conti was uh, Conti was one of those one of those materials that that uh, lots of artists use. So I, I like that. It's got again, it's got this kind of um, sort of this old kind of. It just was old to me. I, I love the way that you talk about deep observation and how it spans both the sciences and art as an artist. And I think the ability to observe the world deeply is um, something that the artists and scientists both share in common, is, um, is, is the similarity and the way it expresses itself ends up being different. But um, this deep observation and love of the natural world is something that I, I think is, you know, is really evident in this work, in the work that you're showing us, in addition to uh, where your imagination comes into play, too. Yeah, and as we move through the space, um, another kind of question that has come to my mind is uh, related to the title of your exhibition. Um, and the title is Does the Dream Dream the Dreamer? Um, and I know that this particular piece that we're looking at right now has a very similar title. Um, could you talk a little bit more about how dreams and like the just kind of concept of dreams have made their way into your work? Yeah. Um, we all, uh, well, as humans, I guess, we, we have this, um, we have this question, I think, that uh, that kind of bothers us. My the question that I've always had is, where did that come from? Where where, where did that idea idea come from? Um, and I was um, as a, as an editorial cartoonist, that was uh, that was something that I was very very aware of. Where does that idea come from? And, and um, uh, you know, when you have to do an editorial cartoon every day, 
a brand new one that says something that is going to be published in newspapers, um, you know, you're, uh, it becomes this kind of like manufacturing process. You have to kind of crank these things out and you have to go search for material uh, however you can find it and find a way to execute that thing. And, um, and ideas are things that um, for getting to the point where, I mean, when I started out, I was just horrible at that. I just, you know, I was just terrible. My cartoons were absolutely an embarrassment. I, you know, but you have to put your name on, you know? <laughs> so, um, uh, but over time, you got very, very good at developing a kind of a process of, of looking at um, potential uh, uh, cartoon subject matter and finding a way to you sort of develop your own voice and you have a process of kind of uh, the process of elimination uh, in, in finding a way to, to say something uh, using your voice. Uh, but it became this um, really comfortable, easygoing kind of way of, of being and I, I enjoyed that. Um, the ideas uh, that in here are a little bit different. They're not things that have to be necessarily understood by the general public. It's just, um, these were things mostly that I just wanted to, to see for myself. And if somebody else enjoyed them also, I was, um, you know, I, I appreciated that too. But, um, you know, I, going down to basics about, you know, where did a, a specific idea come from? It's just, it's kind of a mystery, almost. Did it, um, you know, I would find myself asking, did, was that something that I came up with, or was that something that someone else said to me? Uh, a word that, that seemed to prompt this image? You know, where did that come from? What, what's, the, what's the process of this thing coming from this kind of germinal state here and, and arriving in this full-fledged, crystallized, fully formed, organic thing? You know, where did that come from? And I started thinking about that and I'm going, okay, well, you know, are we the product of something else? There's this, uh, there's this notion, um, and I think it's um, uh, Elon Musk um, had this, um, threw out this theory, and I think he was just sort of playing around. I don't know whether he actually thinks this or not, but he, um, he wondered, sort of mused aloud to somebody, that, um, that remembered that and, and said it to somebody else, but he mused that, um, is there a possibility that we are merely the expression, the manifestation of some sort of digital kind of thing that um, on a, the sort of universal cosmic scale that, that um, you know, that produces, you know, what we are, where we're living, well, how, our, how we exist. Um, and that's, I mean, that's really kind of, um, um, that's intriguing to me. So I, I wonder, um, you know, are we the product of someone else's dream then? Are these things dreaming us? Are we, you know, I mean, it, it comes down to what is, what is reality? Is, it, is this something that, that we, you know, as we envision ourselves as the dominant species of, of being the, uh, purveyors and, uh, and definers of reality, or are we the product of somebody else's um, determined reality? I don't know. So it's just, it just kind of, it's one of those things where, um, um, where you just kind of, that's an intriguing question, much like laying in bed when I was uh, growing up and I think I was maybe six or seven years old and uh, somebody was talking to me about uh, earlier in the day about infinity, something that never, never, ever, ever ends. And I remember laying in bed, um, thinking of that, looking out the window at the sky and wondering, okay, what is infinity? What is that thing that never, ever, ever ends? And I remember thinking about that, never ends, never ends. And it, almost it got me into this kind of like, like a, some sort of, um, it was like a, almost a trance of some sort, like a, maybe the, the, something that the transcendentalists uh, 
you know, and try to uh, train themselves so that they can get into that. I was, I was sort of already into that, that sort of, that mind thing where it was just, um, and I had to grab myself and, and pull myself out of that because I felt I was going to be lost in some sort of, uh, some void of some sort. So, um, what was the question? So as, when we started uh, talking today, you know, of course it came up that you were creating most of this work during COVID. And, you know, I mentioned, I really think it does happen this non-poly moment that we're in. Um, and, and I'm wondering if you could share some of your reflections of working during this moment in our history. And do you have any words of, I think, hope for where That's a great question. Um, this is the piece, this is, this is called Corvids. The title of this is Corvids. And um, if you're familiar with, um, um, with Latin, um, you know, the Corvid is the, the Corvid family, so it's a bird family that includes blue jays, magpies, crows, ravens. Um, and uh, this, was, this was actually the piece that I began when I came back home from traveling in March when um, they were beginning to shut down airplanes, airports. Uh, they weren't allowing any international flights. Um, uh, didn't close, they didn't close uh, the highways, so I was able to get, get back home. But I, um, I started this that day. I, I came to, I came over to my studio after uh, returning and um, um, and started working on this. And it, um, I think I might have gone, I think I might have started here, actually. Right there. And um, just curiously started to paint. Um, and again, I, I, this is not, um, it's not, something that you could, you know, dissect into, oh, I'm speaking about this, this is very specific, this is my, you know, this is my take on this, uh, this whole situation here, because it's not that at all. It's, it's kind of, um, it's too simplistic that way, it's, it's different. It's, um, um, I had this, and I talked about uh, catharsis, you know, trying to work this, this, uh, this apprehension, this anxiety out of me, uh, that doesn't quite work for me. It's just um, I felt the the impetus to, to begin to work, and that's the product of that. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Whether there's um, solutions contained in that, the way that paint is laid onto that onto that paper on on canvas, or, or not. I, I don't know. It's just my my that moment in time where I felt like I needed to to, to get something down. And this this picture here was the beginning of all of this. That was that was what I started in March, and uh, the last piece that I did was Ma, uh, M A W, uh, in October. And I uh, um, I don't know what any of this uh, stuff says about you know the current state that we're in. I would like to think that. It's essentially hopeful because um, hopeful in the sense that you know we're kind of all in this together, and uh, that that the hope then is uh, is feeling the energy to create something uh, with the intent of someone else coming along to see it, and I guess that's the that's the hopeful part because. You know, if we're living this truly dystopian kind of uh, kind of kind of world right now, then people wouldn't even be around to even look at art. But but here we are talking about it and and discussing it. Um, so I think um, all of this stuff is essentially hopeful. That's all, that's how I've always seen my my work as a as a writer and illustrator is uh, is they are all um, they are efforts. Of hope because um, there's lessons there that, that I think you can learn. Not necessarily something that the, the illustrator uh, wanted to kind of 
teach that um, I learn from my work and I think other people learn and see things that I didn't have seen in the first place too. Um, yeah, I have to be careful because, uh, you know, we all have to be careful because, um, you know, we're just, we're putting this stuff out as a, as a, as a personal, uh, as, a, as kind of a personal thing. Um, and our responsibility, responsibility beyond that is, uh, it's out of, our, out of our control. What you see, what you see in there, um, uh, is, um, is of your doing, I guess. If you can learn something positive from that. See, I'm not used to talking about this stuff like this, but. Um, well, that's great. I mean, it, it makes me think of uh, Alice Regal, um, who is one of probably the founders of art history, and you know, talked about the idea that um, for a work of art to be completed, it had to be the viewer has to bring part of themselves to it. So it's, um, and to me, that makes me think of the, the statement that you that you just shared, that you made it and you created it, and then it's, it's, out of, it's out of your hands and it's there for other people to come and bring part of themselves to it. And I think that's one of the things that's so powerful about it, and um, in your work in, in particular, and being able to um, see something different every time I come in and, and look at your, your pieces, is um, it, it allows me to bring you know, part of myself, no matter what the day is, to it in a different way. So, thank you, thank you for creating that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the um, yeah, I think in I think in order for something to really um, become a work of art, it has to be it has to be viewed and um, uh, and I mean, what people take away from looking at any of these pieces here is. Um, is something that I had not probably intended, um, and and maybe the things that I wanted people to pay attention to, they did not even see. So. Did you have more input? Well, I think as we're kind of wrapping up, um, you know, we just were wondering if you had anything else in particular that you wanted to share with us. Um, you know, something that we haven't talked too much about is the material side of the work. Um, and I know triage over here um, is something that includes some pieces of, um, you know, kind of found objects almost that just happen into the painting and you decide to include it, um, like the paint can up above and um, like the, the mixing stick. Um, so I don't know if that's something you want to talk about as well. Yeah. Um, my. Um I had um, I had no intent to um, I did not want to show a perfect piece. I think that's what the that's probably the most important thing that I probably the sort of the guiding force behind every one of these was that I didn't mind people seeing the my process, the mistakes. Um, you see a lot of the. Uh, uh, a lot of these uh, canvases and pieces of paper are, some of them are torn, they're stained, they're dripped, and, um, and those are things that just happened in the course of me executing these, uh, these works. Um, and this one I kind of had taken to, um, um, to the nth degree. Um, you can see my footprints in the, in the work. Um, but these objects that are that are up there are actually embedded in the canvas now. I think there's sort of a word they they call them combines now. Mm -hmm. um, that was Rauschenberg, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, had conceived of this notion of combining things um, that that sort of broke the picture plane. And I kind of played with that too. I love that idea. Um, but those were objects that um, the paint rag and the, the stirring stick and that paint can up on top there were things that actually were there on the, I was working over in that area uh, of the canvas, the upper left-hand corner, and um, I had a spill and wiped it up with the rag, and um, 
and set that down there, and it kind of stuck there for a little bit. And the, and the stick was stuck there too because I just kind of left that, that, those things and, and, and uh, went away. Came back the next day and those things were still there, and I liked that. I liked mm -hmm. that, the feel of that. Um, and I liked the idea of breaking that, that very flat, two-dimensional surface there. And it was something that had miraculously transformed this image on a canvas, on a dirty canvas, actually, um, actually transformed it into an object, a thing that you could, um, that you could walk around and, and, uh, and look at from different perspectives. But I like that, and I like the the uh, the imperfection of this. I, I like the um, showing the, uh, the that authority, that human authority, um, showing that presence there in the in the ex execution of this of this object. And it's uh, you know it's torn. It's torn. It's uh, all of these are all of these are drop claws. So there's seams here. There's a there's some masking tape. Um, there's some debris that, that kind of found its way in, and um, and I like all of that. Um, my footprint. Um, it just has a real nice, imperfect, fallible um, look to it. And I, I think that uh, I think that that's something that. Kind of draws you in uh, to a picture. Somebody coming up to it for the first time, it kind of draws them in, rather than having some work of art. And I, I remember seeing pieces that were so pristine it looked like nobody was responsible. And I think maybe that might have been the intent of the the artist. Um, but there's others that you get a sense that they didn't want to show any fallibility, any imperfection. And I like that. I, I like bringing in uh, uh, people so that they can look closer and see the um, just the imperfection of that. The, I mean, the, the canvas is filthy. It's just it's stained. Uh, it was a it was a piece of the canvas that I had that um, there was another piece that had started on it and it was raining and it got all wet. And um, you can see where it was kind of bleeding there, but. Uh, it's just a, um, I like how it turned out. We do too. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've loved how it all, all has turned out. So um, before we wrap up, is there, any, is there anything else that you would like to share with us? I don't know. I think I, um, I just appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to occupy this space for the the short period of time that I had it. Um, I learned a lot doing this. Uh, like I said, I, my work is, um, um, the bulk of my work is illustrative, mm -hmm. you know, contained in these little tiny, relatively small books. And uh, to have a chance to um, just sort of, you know, let out all the stops and, and create some of this work that had absolutely no purpose other than uh, it just needed to be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, well, David, it's been truly our honor that you chose us to work with on this project. Thank you so much for, you. This, for this thrill. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.